Black, welcome, black, welcome, black. This is B1 Ag. I'm John Henry Harris. We have Farmer Brown EMC. Everybody knows Jay Z. Everybody knows Jay Z is one of the greatest rappers of all time. At least that's what he's considered by many. But he has made a definite investment uh, into plant based chicken. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Now here at B1A, we focus on uh, black agriculture as it pertains to agriculture, production, education, marketing, nutrition, health, food, and economics for the black family and the black community. And this is a pretty interesting story as Jay-Z is now investing in a plant-based chicken company called Simulate. Now, Simulate, their main product is uh their main product is a plant-based chicken nugget so they're vegan chicken nuggets and it was founded actually by a 19 year old entrepreneur named ben uh pasternak so it's pretty interesting you know it's a young guy starts his company now he has jay-z investing in it uh which is definitely going to help him Raise the profile of his company, uh, Farmer Brown EMC. What do you? Uh, I know we've talked about the three D printed chicken nuggets. So, uh, what do you have to say about vegan chicken nuggets? First, I just like to say peace to the B one family. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, this isn't new, actually. And so, when you think about, uh, we talk about agriculture entrepreneurship. And so what this will classify is obviously this isn't a uh, direct chicken. So this is a value added product. Value added product means, OK, I'm not directly selling you what grows out of the ground, but I'm processing it into something that you can consume. So Jay-Z is actually invested in vegan cookies as well. Uh, when we think about some of the uh, athletes and uh, what we would call celebrities, so, for example, DeAndre Jordan, Kyrie Irving, and Chris Paul invest in the plant-based food company Beyond Meat. Uh, we know this is a company that's uh, funded also by Bill Gates. So this is a definitely a, a conversation that's worth having. I think there are some opportunities as far as just uh, getting our wheels turning of, you know, what the wave of food security is turning into, as well as investments. But uh, Jay-Z, when we think of his impact on title and the concept of streaming as we know it, I definitely think this is a game changer and something that de directly affects agriculture. When we think of what are different plants that uh, black producers can possibly produce to supplement ideas like this, whether you're talking about this direct simulate company or companies created by our own. I think this is a good opportunity to have this discussion. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and play a short video about the founder. Again, he's a 19 year old, founded this company in 2018, which is a you know, pretty interesting, you know, that's a, uh, uh, a feat in itself, being so young. So, before I play this short video, I would like to put up our copyright disclaimer. 
Copyright disclaimer in section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976 allowances made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. I moved to New York alone at 15 to create my first company and have been alone here since then. You know, my family's back in Sydney and I dropped out of, you know, middle school. So I kind of sacrificed everything. And like the, the kind of brutal way to put it is that if you don't sacrifice everything, you know, the goal becomes the sacrifice. And I've consistently found that, you know, just being really hyper-focused on one thing is how you make that one thing come alive. My name's Ben Pastanak, and I'm the founder and CEO of Simulate. My company is a nutrition technology company, and we make a product called Nugs, which is a chicken nugget simulation. The reason we founded the company was we felt that food has been kind of rejecting technology as an industry. And if you look at other industries, like say transportation, you know, we've essentially gone from horseback to, you know, multi-planetary rockets in a couple hundred years. And we still produce the same, you know, food the same way. So we think that redefining how humans get their nutrition represents one of the greatest opportunities to improve how people live. I think the American dream, you know, is like giving half a million dollars to a 15 year old to work on whatever, <laughs> whatever they want. And I, you know, I, I was given that opportunity and it's something I appreciate every single day. I kind of say that every idea is a bad idea. And certainly ours was that, you know, we launched as just D to C chicken nuggets, which truly sounds like a really bad idea. It just takes a lot of force to like bring something to life. And now we, you know, never get questioned on what we're doing. It's kind of cliche, but you know, you, you have to stay hyper-focused and you have to be super persistent. It's, it's at the start, it's just so brutal. It really feels like everyone against you and you, you have to keep pushing. And as, as long as you stay focused, you, you don't get sucked into any distractions, you'll succeed. It's actually, it's a pretty simple formula that people oversee, but all you have to do is be persistent, stay focused, and eventually you'll figure it out. Now, Brian. We've heard this word a lot coming up lately, simulation, simulation, simulation. And this company is trying to fuse, make a symbiotic relationship between technology and food in the way uh, we receive our food. Um, I don't know, man. It just makes my uh, the hair on the back of my neck stand up a little bit. Just maybe I'm overanalyzing. Um, maybe not. So I think for, for, the, for this piece of the conversation, I'm going to play devil's advocate. And so uh, when we think about, we talk about Bill Gates a lot, you know, on this podcast and his efforts to, you know, cut down on uh, greenhouse gases. Uh, the purpose of this effort uh, from this gentleman is to cut down on the factory farming. And so we do know when we think about uh, the chicken that we eat, you know, they're injected with a lot of hormones and we see these kids, these teenagers looking like full adults because they're eating chicken, so to speak, the chicken nuggets, the chicken patties that's, in, you know, stuffed with hormones that make you grow faster. That's the pur purpose of putting them in the chicken. And so when we're thinking from an agricultural standpoint, uh, it makes all the sense in the world. Yeah, we don't want all of these hormone stuffed chickens. And so we're going to be able to make a product that tastes like chicken that's not necessarily using the actual chicken. Uh, me, you know, when you talk to some of the elders, they'll tell you like, no, nah, them things you're eating right there, them ain't chickens. Uh, they got feathers, they got beaks, but that's not chicken. We, we have a, a world of 7.6 billion people. If we're just talking about what we call North America, there's 390 million people. And out of that, uh, there's obviously hundreds of millions that eat chicken. And then we do also have a large base of people that's wanting to go more vegan, you know, less meat diets. But on the flip side of that, because uh, technically this isn't natural uh, to fill this up, to make this plant based uh, product work is filled with soy. And so we've had a few discussions on this platform talking about the implications of soy. 
soy does tend to affect your hormones, uh, especially in males. And so that has another, you know, when it comes to estrogen. And so that has a whole nother unintended or intended con consequence, de depending on how you're framing this conversation. Now, you know, that's agricultural. Yes, it absolutely does help the environment when it comes, okay, we, we can raise less chickens. Uh, we don't have to fill your children's diet up with these uh, hormone infused chicken products. Now, on the flip side of it, this isn't natural and this hasn't been, uh, I guess, tested amongst the consumers long enough to know what the long term outcomes. Uh, it makes me think of the vaping. It seems on, on subject, but off. So vaping was a solution to tobacco. Right. And so if you remember before the COVID lockdowns, there was like a huge you know, there's a lot of news stories about people vape, vaping and having these lung issues from uh, using a product that was sold as an alternative for uh, the effects of nicotine. And so, you know, once again, I'm not a doctor, so I can't give any advice, but I think this is worth looking at as far as putting it in the context of what are the possible unintended con consequences of making simulated chicken. This makes me think of the Matrix. You know, uh, the real thing is the real thing. And the simulation is a is a, a copy of the real thing. And the copy is never going to have the same quality of the original. We know on an existential level, we eat food to gain energy. We eat food to gain nutrition. And so if I'm not eating the natural thing that the earth produces, you know, they say we are what we eat. I definitely can feel what you said as far as, you know, we eat food for the nutrition, not for the, it's like, you know, there is a, there is a real purpose why we eat, you know what I'm saying? It's just for the nutrition, nutritional value to you know, to refuel our body. But it seems like uh, we're becoming more and more just concerned about what tastes like something and not the nutritional value. So I think that was a you know, very good point. And also, uh, just to give the our viewers a little more background, Simulate um, is in, in the business of making next generation chicken from plants with input from customers that allow models similar to software updates. Simulate's mission of perfecting plant-based chicken is fueled by a passion next desire to create great tasting products that eliminate the outdated environmental destructive practice of slaughtering chickens for food. And this is a uh, Pasternak quoting. Uh, Historically, our food system has rejected the use of technology, resulting in a system that is highly inefficient and primitive. This new funding will be used to create and protect the intersection of technology and nutrition. And see, that's where you know, you know, I'm down with, you know, as far as uh, healthy, healthy plant based alternatives. But this uh, these companies are more, it seems like aligned with, like I say, intersecting food with technology. How do you feel about that, Farmer Brown? We think about Facebook in the early days. It was just a network for people that were attending college. It was just for people that were attending college to communicate with one another. Uh, then it went more mainstream. So more people were able to get on Facebook and there was definitely a positive benefit, you know, better social react, uh, interaction. People were able to reach uh, people face to face across the planet. Uh, long term, Facebook turned into a governmental tool. You know, it became a tool of uh, governments uh, to affect politics, to affect voting. Uh, to where now in the last few years, we've seen people get censored. You know, we talk about the cancel culture. And so what in, what was originally intended and applied this to this chicken based uh, plant based chicken company, what was originally intended just to connect a few people became a huge asset. Uh, I'm not in any of these offices, but I doubt Mark Zuckerberg is the main voice now that influences the operations of Facebook. Uh, same way with this company. This is a young man, never met him never had a conversation with them, might have the greatest heart in the world to just really save the chickens and give the future generations a, a more formidable choice of food. But we see how things like this, when you create them with tech, because tech can be controlled within these small circles. We talk about that 1% uh, 
uh, this 1% attires to everything when we talk about tech. And so I, I don't know how I feel about connecting our food security with tech, especially when we've seen how these entities can become the uh, more dominant influencers in the way we go about just regular human society. Like I said, it's really not natural. So think about this, uh, going back to what we were talking about with the land usage. And so, okay, we're not growing as many chickens anymore. You know, we're not having to infuse them with hormones. You're not taking up the space. You're not dealing with the contamination. But what if everybody loves this product? Everybody's like, oh my God, this is just the best tasting chicken in the world. We know that consumer demand drives production. So this does mean that I'm gonna have to grow a lot more plants to supply the need. And so guess what? I'm gonna have to grow a lot more plants than what it would take chickens to create a basic patty or a chicken nugget. And so when we think about uh, Bill Gates' 269,000 acres and the experiments going on, are they experimenting with a new type of plant? Are we gonna avoid uh, you know, these unintended consequences that might cause new pre-existing conditions? that never existed before. I know our ancestors, I think it was an interesting way to contextualize it saying, you know, the antiquated ways that the farmers used to do it. You know, farmers aren't using technology and so it's not helping. <clears throat> our ancestors farmed for thousands, if not 10,000s of years and never had some of the health conditions that we're experiencing today. And so I do think that there is a wisdom in some of the old ways of producing I think what can be explored is uh, what are new ways of marketing uh, lifestyles. Do we, you know, the question is, do we eat too much? It's not my place to police, you know, somebody's diet and eating habits, but we got a question is food, uh, you know, is our diets right now based on our nutritional need or is it based on, okay, this is being marketed to us. Like we absolutely have to have this. And so I think this is definitely a deeper conversation than just, you know, plant-based chicken. This does, how does this affect the farmer in the deep south, the black farmer who's raising chickens? And so if this company is optimally successful, is this gonna put the poultry producers out of business? Uh, will this be an open market, whatever this plant is? Because another thing with these plant-based uh, these plant -based, uh, meats, nobody really knows what plants are going into them. I did see that soy and wheat but they're also going to use plant matter from other plants that we may not, if we knew what it was, be as as uh, amiable to. So this is definitely a deep, deeper conversation to have that directly ties to agriculture. You know, mute, bro. Now, Simulate is worth $250 million, and they actually just wrapped up a $50 million round of investing this month. Now, in an effort to continue innovating chicken, the chicken category, they launched uh, Discs, and it's a product made to mimic nostalgic chicken patties, but it's made from plants. Uh, the company, the way, this is the, like a, a part of the way they do business, um, they 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 do they do software up like the same manner in which you get a software update on your phone. You can talk about the chicken patties or what you feel about the chicken, and they use customer input to change the product on the fly. So it's like. And, you know, and, and what I know from food, depending on what region you're in, you know, there's different tastes. You know, uh, Southwest may eat chicken differently from in Maryland. And Maryland may eat differently as far as the taste of chicken or style or flavor uh, than California, which may be different from, you know, uh, Louisiana. See what I'm saying? So it's kind of, for me, it's kind of interesting to see how, like, who do you go with? Or do you tailor your, do you tailor the taste of the chicken by region? What do you think about that, Farmer Brown? Like, 
software update for your chicken committee. So technically that already exists. And so right now, if I go to KFC, uh, KFC is a global uh, entity. So if I go to KFC in India, it's going to have more spices uh, to the Indian taste palette. If I go to a KFC in China, it's going to be more conducive to the Chinese taste palette. Uh, if I go to one in Kentucky, it's going to be what the 11 herbs and spices for the Kentucky taste palette. So that already exists with the spices. Now you're talking about computer programming. Uh, well, we know if we've been watching over the last few months, computers can get hacked. Uh, there's all sorts of unintended consequences with, uh, you know, too high of dependence on technology. I'm not against technology. I'm not against the techs. But I am against those thugs that will use it to, you know, do nefarious things. And so, you know, not to get too deep into the tinfoil uh, koofy concept, but I do definitely see some uh, negative outcomes of getting too dependent on this model. I think with anything, is it's definitely worth exploring on a uh, on a manageable scale. On a manageable scale, does this work? There might be a few people that's cool with testing this out. Observe them for the next few years. Does their body have any abnormal reactions to a plant-based chicken diet that can be modified with a remote control? And then from there, you know, once again, these people don't plan two and three years out. They plan decades ahead. And so I think uh, one of the beauty, and I'm still answering your question, one of the beautiful moments of this, I would hope anybody watching that has children that's still kind of trying to figure out what they want to do as far as career, you know, entrepreneurship, we need more of our young minds focusing on these same topics. Okay, we see that there's a food system that needs to feed more people. Uh, we see that the food system as we have now isn't really uh, environmentally sustainable. So putting their minds towards this. This dude right here, this is what he did when he was 15 and it's now turned into a $250 million company. Simulated chicken, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to be as, as, as PC as possible, but I'm, I, you know, I've had mamas cooking and I've had grannies cooking, and this ain't neither. Amen. <laughs> Amen to that. But it's still, you know, it's uh, still very interesting. You know, uh, Jay-Z and a host of other, like as you listed before, a host of other entertainers and athletes, uh, tech people, they're really investing into food. They're investing in the food production. They're investing in the farming. Uh, it's a trend. Um and it's a trend. Uh, do you think this trend is going to continue? Uh, but I know the way I see it, if Jay-Z, Beyonce, and Bill Gates, and Bezos, and all these people are so now so all of a sudden so interested in food, I think that it behooves us to be to take a closer look at our food as well. Because everybody seems to be so interested in food and what they're going to feed us so i think we need to take that same energy keep that same energy and put it into you know paying attention to what we're eating and investing more into what we put into our bodies as well to answer your question in the words of black dot i'm gonna keep it a bean i'm gonna keep it a bean you ask okay is this trend gonna continue it is one way or another. It's gonna it's gonna continue whether we're taking the initiative or it's gonna continue uh, at the initiative taken by others. We're gonna have to inevitably. There's no way around it, whether we're forced into it because we have no choice, or whether we take initiative on the front end of it to get ahead of this. Like I said, this is a huge opportunity for anybody watching because technically all of this is new. Uh, the same way when we uh, thought of MySpace, and it was actually what is a black planet was the first, like, you know, social media model. And, yes. you know, how many of us, you know, we, we were consumers of black planet, but nobody got in their minds like, hey, this is going to turn into something one day. I remember MySpace. I mean, the mind was like, oh, my God, you know, social media can never get bigger than MySpace. What was his name? Tom, Tim. We don't forgot his name. Right. And then that morphed into Facebook, then it morphed into Snapchat, then Instagram, and, then, and now TikTok. And so the same way when we're talking about the food system, once again, if I have a ninth grader right now, 
guess what? Over the next few years, our food system is literally going to uh, follow the same model as social media. As far as every, say, I would say four years, five years, there's going to be a new innovation on how we eat. So we see the trend of how we're communicating with one another online. Uh, we've, we've, uh, you and I have seen the trend of how we listen to music. We went from eight tracks to record players to cassettes to CDs to I, you know, it, and so all of these trends exist. So to answer your question, absolutely, the trend is going to exist. And so we, as a community, got to ask ourselves, where are we going to be within this? Are we just going to continue to be the perpetual consumers? Are we going to get the, you know, are we going to read the writing on the wall? That, so I, I was reading a few uh, weeks ago, and I'm not big on the tech and stock, so to speak. But Bill Gates sold a whole lot of his stock in the tech companies, and he's really invested in the farmland and the ag tech. Uh, currently in the, in the state of Kentucky, I serve on the governor's ag tech council. Uh, I don't got much voice. It's more so just, you know, kind of a convening of different ag entities around the state. And the whole goal is, you know, to make the state of Kentucky one of the ag tech capitals of the country. Meaning, hey, look at our state. You know, this is how we're incorporating technology and ag. When you think about companies like App Harvest, so they've literally created a huge farm and it's indoors, incorporating a lot of technology. Now, uh, once again, we try to look at things objectively. I can see a lot of problems, you know, having your food system uh, uh, so tied to technology. But then I can also see as, as, as the population is growing we're becoming less educated. Let's just be honest. You know, it's not coming from a condescending uh, point of view. I'm not saying that getting a degree in agriculture is certainly going to make you smart, but we're literally three going on to four generations detached from a farm. I was talking to a sister uh, not too long ago, and I brought this up before. She was talking to a group of kids because we was chopping it up just about the 3D uh, printed chicken. And she brought that up to the kids and they was like, yeah, this is cool. Yeah, I'd eat 3D printed chicken. Uh, I was presenting to some uh, some kids earlier this week and I'm like, yeah, what do y'all think about 3D printed chicken and lab grown meat? And they smiled about it, you know, because when I'm presenting, I try not to, you know, uh, interject my personal beliefs more so than just kind of laying out, hey, this is the world you're in. How do you feel about it? And so, per you know, inside I'm like, hey, y'all don't see a problem with this. I can't necessarily tell you, hey, this is a problem more so than, hey, you know, you might want to be in the room. You might want to be in the laboratory. You might want to be on the farm. You might want to be on the high tunnel, the greenhouse, the barn where these discussions are being had. And not only being there as a spectator, but as somebody with a voice. And so to even have a voice within these spaces, we, we definitely need to within on a communal level, understand the context of what this means. Jay Z is not a stupid man. Uh, Beyonce herself, so she's invested in a, a watermelon cold press company. Uh, Morgan Freeman, he has a 124-acre bee uh, sanctuary because we understand a, a one out of every three bites of food that we eat is pollinated by bees. We see that companies using all of these different chemicals are a part of why the bees are dying off. All of this is tied together. You know, you can't separate one piece of agricultural production with another whether you're talking about traditional means of production or technology. And so once again, you know, as to not get caught in the confusion, we really try to contextualize this. Jay-Z is not a stupid man. I, I don't think he spent much time on a farm. I mean, I don't, I don't know what this man has done, but he, uh, you know, on that level of operation, these people understand things a little bit differently than us at, I'll, I'll say on the ground grassroots level. And so what do we do? We follow the bag. How many of us grew up, uh, you know, seeing Bill Gates as the icon of wealth? I'm going to get that Bill Gates money. I'm going to get that Jay-Z money. And they tell us to follow the money. And like you said, following the money is, hey, these people are getting into food production. And it, won't, and it does not hurt us to get into food production as well. Even if we don't do it on a large scale as Jay-Z, uh, you know, that's a $250 million company at this point. Um, if you're just growing, like I say, you're starting your own garden. Uh, if you're just growing one plant, if you're just growing one tomato plant, if you're just starting with flowers, you know, it's uh, imperative that we get back in tune and touch with our innate ability to grow our own food. So ancient knowledge is, is, is built in our DNA. 
It's encoded in us. It's a birthright. You know, the, the ability to grow your own food, that's actually a birthright. You have the God-given right to do this. This is what the earth is for. This is what it's made for. The world is a garden. So Farmer Brown, you had any last words uh, to say about Jay-Z investing in Simulate? So you remember the controversy uh, when Jay-Z first took that picture with the title crew. Uh, I think they were out of Sweden or one of those European nations. And I, you know, just remember the backlash, you know, everybody's woke now. Everybody's woke. Uh, people are conscientious of the complexion of, you know, the, the moving pieces within these dynamics. You know, I'm I'm trying not to be negative right now, so I'm trying to be. Uh, pardon me if I <laughs> trying to think about the words I'm using. It's not out of fear. I I don't want to scare anybody. I don't I don't want it to sound like I'm being uh, negative, Ned. But people, we have a very serious issue in front of us right now. Uh, I was talking to a brother this week. We got about a four or five year period. If you want to be very practical. We got about a four or five year window window of time to take some action on our place within ag and food production. Uh, this isn't a thing of, hey, y'all, you know, now that you've seen this, let's, let's just all start farming. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. But we're getting enough signals, uh, not only from mainstream news, but now even our uh, artists. And we're going to touch on this later. Even a little Boosie talking about, man, I got 75 acres. You know, for what I'm spending on clothes, I can get acres. The word is getting out amongst the influencers. And uh, unfortunately, right now, a lot of our attention has been diverted elsewhere. I see that they're going to make Juneteenth the uh, uh, official holiday. And, that, and that's being given to us as, oh, see, you're, you're making progress. We can't eat Juneteenth. At the same time, this same governing body is still just wanting to study the effects of reparations and more important than politics. You know, this is not to shade anybody whose uh, profession and focus is politics. We're going to have to feed ourselves. And it's one thing you're dealing with a system that's deciding whether or not, you know, you're going to eat, you know, what your place in line is food, but now you're dealing with technology. Technology is, is, is proven historically, you know, check the receipts. The technology can be racist. And when you're dealing with technology being racist, uh, discriminatory, what, what are you going to protest against? You're going to protest against a robot? You're going to protest against a machine that doesn't know you exist? It's just been programmed. Okay, if this, this thing that comes to me has this complexion, it eats third. You know, how do you legislate with a robot? Uh, you know, how do you uh, contend with a robot? How do you have an argument with a robot? Social justice is one thing. Food justice, that uh, the power is in our hands. Uh, that power starts with where our minds are. Like, uh, like Nilly Fuller said, you know, change starts in our minds. When we decide that something is important, when we decide that, okay, yeah, I, I want to eat today. Right now, I can just ride up the street, walk up the street, or go in the backyard in the garden and pick something. But what happens when our, all of our seeds are patented because we've become too dependent on technology that creates these these uh, programmable seeds, similar to what this dude is doing with chicken. Yeah, you want chicken that has uh, 33 milligrams of salt versus uh, 34. Oh, you want a little bit more turmeric in yours. Oh, you want a little bit more. Uh, I forget the se the seasoning that's in India. It sounds cool. It sounds convenient. But with every bit of convenience that we get at the hands of somebody else. That's another link on this proverbial chain that we find ourselves tied to. As this time right now is a great opportunity to insert ourselves in something that our ancestors got great at thousands of years ago. This is also a very dangerous time when it comes to our attention span, when it comes to what we're focusing on. There's some things that's far beyond our control. Like I, I don't know too many people that right now, I mean, we saw what happened on January the 6th this year. These are staunch white folks, and some of them, you know, the, the system came down on them. And so, you know, the concept of, hey, y'all, I don't like what y'all are doing with our food security. The concept of the melanated family, 
running up on the Capitol to get food justice, it's not going to be viable. Uh, practically speaking, the, the lack of support from the melanated community with, with what's going on, the trick bags going on with the black farmers, that's not a good look on us. Uh, when we put all of these things together, when we look at the energy grids going down, when we look at, at the ransomware hacks, when we look at the trend, you don't have to be a scientist or a smart person to see the trends of what's going on. We're becoming more and more dependent every day as the seconds tick. And, and I'm, I'm feeling like Jay-Z and some of these celebrities are understanding this on a business level. You know, a businessman is like, okay, what does a consumer want? You know, what are the trends of what consumers want? Consumers want more tailored foods. And see, with B1 Ag, we're just talking about food and production. So, yep, the people's going to want more tailored foods. We see the people's on lockdown. People are becoming more, uh, we're becoming homebodies. And so now we're talking about Jetsons. I, I want my chicken sandwich delivered to me. Uh, you know, people aren't wanting to go back to work to the restaurants justifiably so man y'all ain't paying me enough i was getting more sitting at home well we know those are getting cut and at the same time when you go back to the restaurant they're telling you oh well you can't come in you gotta go through the drive through if you don't have a card in that we can't give you anything there's gonna be somebody preparing those chicken sandwiches when i say somebody there'll be an entity it might be these little mechanical fingers doing it but once again, every day that we're not inserting ourselves in creating new, innovative ways of producing food, uh, storing food, distributing food, packaging food, and making sure the people that need food the most are getting it. Every day we don't do that. Every day we're making ourselves dependent on something that could easily say, I just don't want to feed you. And what is the alternative to that? I'm not here to be negative. We're not here to uh, rain on anybody's parade, but we got some very serious issues that we're going to inevitably have to address, whether by hook or crook. And there it is. People in the Ag family, if you have any questions, I would like to send us pictures of your uh, of what you're growing. So let us know. You can send it to B1 Ag Hip Hop at gmail.com um, also we would like to be a resource for you if you have any questions about uh anything from helping you know advice on helping you to grow your whatever you're growing better or just give us a just hit us up with anything you know we would like we'd love to be a resource we can point you to uh, a lot of resources that you may not be aware of that's available to you and also, you know, at, go to healthyblackfood.com and you can learn how to grow your own food with uh, Farmer Brown MC and me. You know, use the promo code podcast and get 30 percent off. Let's get black to the guard. This is the, this is how we can make sure that your personal food economy is just not overran with technology. You know, I'm a, I like technology and I think technology can be a great thing. Uh, but uh, when it comes to my food, I just kind of like I'm a little old school. I just like a regular seeded uh, fruit or vegetable, you know, naturally grown, you know, and just a little old school like that. So please forgive me. <laughs> just please forgive me. I got to insert this once again i gotta be conscious there is a medical therapeutic being implemented around the world right now medical experiment and some people are saying magnets are sticking to their arms and and it's not necessary it's, it's they what is it mrna it's changing things it's changing things within people's bodies uh whether it's good or bad things are changing and just part of me wonders now is this food this tech based food merged with uh tech you know tech based uh experimental medicines once again cuz we know it takes 8 years when we're talking about you know vaccinations to really test it on the 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 uh lab rats i just wonder would those things have any sort of connection 
I'm eating tech based food and then, you know, my genes are changing and my, my genetics are changing inside of me. And so in year one, OK, nothing seems to be a problem. These are just some things to think about. That's why we need to know what's in, what's in, what's in. We need to know what's in what we put in our body. Hey, let's eat better. Hey, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful day. Be prosperous. Be abundant. Uh, get some sunshine on your face. Uh, get somebody a hug today. Hey, Caroline. <laughs> You know, um, smile today. You know, all this, I know this is a agriculture show, but at the end of the day, good agriculture, good food, this is what it evokes. It evokes love, it evokes happiness, it evokes joy, you know, it evokes good health. And uh, that's what we're about here at B1A. Hope you have a wonderful day. Jay Z, you know, there, him and other and other entertainers and artists and people who've never been in the food, or they're they're more concerned and in investing and becoming part of this food system now more than ever. And uh, we need to take a look at that. You know, there is a reason why they are doing so, and that's and and that alone is enough for us to pay more attention to what we're putting into our bodies and also to get to growing ourselves. Y'all have a wonderful day. We'll be back soon with another episode. And I uh, really want to know something. Hey, learn how to grow something. Be one ad. Y'all take it easy. <laughs>